Welcome to Sobcast the Podcast, where I, Christina Wolfgram, beg the question, what even is mental health? This podcast is created in collaboration with Dive Through, a mental wellness company that actually knows what they're talking about. Hello, good morning, good evening. As you might already know, even though Sobcast the Podcast is about the pursuit of good mental health, We'll be talking about some not-so-good mental health things like, say it with me, anxiety, depression, and not knowing where to find coffee when you move somewhere new. Welcome to Sobcast the Podcast. (laughs) I am coming to you live from my living room. It is 10.23 p.m. I am in my Bob's Red Mill a sweatshirt that I got a day when I was being a tourist. I didn't know that Bob's Red Mill, I think you would know what I'm talking about if you go in like the flower aisle and there's like regular flower and like bleached flower, unbleached flower, and then like a huge section of like coconut flower, almond flower, beeswax flower, flower flower, and it's all made by this guy with a beard and his name's Bob and he has a red mill and apparently that red mill is in Portland and not to brag but I hit up the gift shop because the sweatshirts were real comfy and uh, I'm not wearing any makeup I am wearing my glasses but I have a lot on my mind and I didn't have time to put mascara on before we started so here I am once again I'm not wearing makeup, can't deny it, can't pretend. All right. I wanted to read something to you. It's a poem that you might have studied in school. I know I did. And for some reason, it stuck with me for basically my whole life. And uh, it's hitting harder than ever. It's called One Art by Elizabeth Bishop. The art of losing isn't hard to master. So many things seem filled with the intent to be lost that their loss is no disaster. Lose something every day. Accept the fluster of lost door keys, the hour badly spent. The art of losing isn't hard to master. Then practice losing farther losing faster, places and names, and where it was you meant to travel, none of these will bring disaster. I lost my mother's watch. And look, my last, or next to last, of three loved houses went. The art of losing isn't hard to master. I lost two cities, lovely ones, and vaster, some realms I owned, two rivers, a continent. I miss them, but it wasn't a disaster. Even losing you. The joking voice, a gesture I love. I shan't have lied. It's evident. The art of losing's not too hard to master, though it may look like. Write it. So yeah, feeling pretty relevant right now. Thank you, Elizabeth Bishop. You know your shit. The idea of home has been on my mind a lot. I think because I just got back from a trip to Los Angeles and I had to get all of my stuff. There's so much stuff. I have so much stuff. Like I have stuff in Maryland where I grew up. I have stuff in... Well, I had stuff in New Mexico where I was living and I had stuff in Los Angeles and now most of it is either at Goodwill or the Salvation Army or here with me in Portland. I want to read you something else. It's, it's reading time. It's like in kindergarten when we all get to sit on the rug and... For some reason, the teacher's voice is just so soothing, and she shows you the pictures in the book, 
and every page turn is just mesmerizing. It's, it's just like that, except for that I'm going to read to you from my journal. Very personal, so please don't make fun of me at all. No, it's okay. You can make fun of me. You know I love you. Um, okay. So my nose itches, and I'm going to read this to you. Yesterday, I woke up crying. My dreams have been filled with images of my ex having sex with name redacted, (laughs) gross and vivid and upsetting. It was looking pretty dire in the getting out of bed department, so I decided I needed to make up a reason to get the fuck up. Would I be able to get out of bed for my own mental stability? No. But would I be able to get out of bed for a bagel sandwich and coffee? Yes. Absolutely. So I called a coffee place down the street and ordered just that. The guy. There is only one guy that works there. And I can imagine his long hair, button-up shirt, and constant bewildered expression. Anyway, this guy said the meal would be ready in six minutes. That was exactly the kind of fire under my ass I needed, turns out. I even put a bra on. I might have made it there in like 15 minutes, wearing glasses and still crying. But my sandwich was still hot and my iced Americano was cold, so no complaints. It was still early in the morning before regular business hours. And along the street where I live, there were several trucks parked for unloading cloth napkins from a laundry company being delivered to a Thai restaurant. Also, boxes and boxes of canned food getting hauled into the corner pet store. A few streets over, a man yelled, Do you even know who I am? And the only people who passed my little sidewalk table were walking dogs. Physically, I was sitting, eating my bagel, but mentally, I was several places at once. And I think what I mean here is I was thinking of other homes that I've had, or at the very least, other places where I found a slice of home. I was walking the route from my flat in Oxford to see my professor Naomi, and along the way, men unload trucks of kegs of beer to all the pubs. There's almost one per two buildings. The ground is wet, and the air is bready, and the sun peaks from behind a cloud. I'm happy to know where I'm going, and comforted I know where I can get a croissant and coffee, and where the bookstore is, and that my finished paper is in my bag. How marvelous that I'm walking through a city where my job is to study, filled with other people whose job is to study. Years later, I live in a place called the Peach House in Los Angeles, and I get up at 9, oh no, I'm sorry, and I run to my 9 a.m. job at the Writing Center. I probably got up at 8.50 for that. There's no time for coffee, but I know I can take a nap in the sun by the pool later. This is when I was going to USC, so I had a very weird schedule because all my classes were at night and I uh, would do my homework by the pool because my life was very charmed. I didn't even know how charmed it was. Every morning, I puff by a woman carrying around a gallon Ziploc bag full of peanuts, like in the shell peanuts. Squirrels line up and I'm happy for her. These college squirrels must have access to dropped french fries and entire pizzas. It's nice of them to accept her peanut offering. (laughs) That's so vivid in my mind. A few years after graduating with my master's in writing, I live in an old but beautiful apartment. It has wood floors and windows we can keep open all the time. I'm freelancing and feeling lost after leaving my job making comedy videos. The thought of staying in my room alone all day exhausts me, so I I walk a mile to Starbucks. I pass the stationery store and a window where 
there are cats and the place where Mr. got his hair cut and the owner was so... (laughs) The owner (laughs) felt that she and her staff were in so much danger that they charged me an extra hundred dollars, which was awful. (laughs) Oh, Mr. (laughs) Where I grew up on the East Coast, I got the impression that sitting in a coffee shop writing was kind of weird. Is it Los Angeles or my confidence that's changed? In this East LA Starbucks, every single person is writing. All the outlets are taken. I look forward to interacting with the manager because she's super sweet and gives me details about her complicated love life. One day, I show up and she's wearing a super sparkly engagement ring. Even though we're in a gigantic city, I recognize the other regular writers. A woman with blonde hair to her waist, a guy who always scribbles frantically on a notepad before click clacking on his laptop, an older man in a suit, always in a suit, and writing in pencil, which for some reason boggles my mind. I feel like the only time I use a pencil is to do math in third grade. That's, I don't know, I, a pencil. So he's, he's always writing a pencil. <sighs> yes, this irks me. I know the pencil is going to get all over the back of his hand. Almost every day he's reading the Bible to himself. And I wonder if his pencil musings are related. I get messages from friends and family, even an ex-boyfriend, that they're proud of me for doing what I said I'd always do, write, in Los Angeles. As my computer dies because there's nowhere to plug it in, I think of those messages. I hope they never figure out that I'm just at a Starbucks on Sunset Boulevard, sitting next to a man muttering to himself in Latin. In March 2020, my little family packed our bags and drove to Santa Fe, New Mexico. It felt right at the time, isolating ourselves. The house was technically in a neighborhood, but I could walk for miles and never see another person. Lots of dogs, who of course I tried to talk to, but they were mostly trained to be guard dogs, so it was hard to get a word in edgewise. Friends texted me again, this time saying they were worried that I was so far away. Technically, I didn't have a car, so my options for exploring felt limited. Maybe they weren't, but they felt like they definitely were. I made a goal to walk 10,000 steps a few times a week. I listened to audiobook after audiobook. They were wonderful, but they were also like one-sided conversations. I walked the same route and tried to find stability in the sameness. If it got dark, usually at 4 p.m., before I finished the 10,000 steps, I walked up and down the driveway. Just up and down the driveway with my friend in my ear. (laughs) My friend, the audiobook. One round trip up and down the driveway was about 350 steps. So sometimes I did a lot of trips, a lot of trips up and down the driveway to get to 10,000. It was lonely, but it was a pandemic. Wasn't everyone lonely? I've been living in Portland for like two months now, uh, which doesn't feel real. My stuff, I have stuff in my parents' house in Maryland, in my apartment in LA, and up until recently, stuff in New Mexico, including my cat. So that was the stuff I focused on retrieving. My ex and his mom packed up all my stuff in New Mexico, something I find deeply embarrassing. I don't, I can't put my finger on why. (laughs) I flew to New Mexico to pick it all up, and in addition to Mr.'s carrier, there were four suitcases. My ex's mom said, we tried to pack everything that was important to you. And when I got home and I finally opened the suitcases, I was 
shocked. Clothes I bought to try to make myself feel better. Art supplies I'd bought to make myself feel better. Random different kinds of paper and birthday cards with no messages written in them. (laughs) An entire bag of cat toys that Mr. doesn't care about. None of it was important to me. I'm starting to get the hang of streets around here in Portland. Moving here feels partly out of the blue and part destiny. I originally came here to stay with one of my best friends. I bought my plane ticket using airline credit that I had from the flight we canceled at the beginning of the pandemic, the one we were going to take from LA to New Mexico. We ended up driving. So I had this airline credit and the ticket to Portland cost me only $20. Also, I remember that day on the flight, I got a whole row to myself and I got a window seat. That was pretty cool. Felt very uh, clandestine, clandestine, you know, meant to be. For so long, when I was in New Mexico, I clung to the hope of going back to my old life in LA. June 15th, that was the date we picked. It was the day that Los Angeles was supposed to reopen and a finish line to the bizarre, bizarre year in New Mexico with my ex and his mom. But uh, instead, on June 15th, I signed a lease for this apartment. (laughs) It's definitely not what I planned, but there is something about walking down a street of businesses before they're busy, sitting outside with a bagel and coffee, watching napkin deliveries and excited dogs, knowing I'm going to spend the day writing that's starting to feel a little like home. Want to improve your mental health but don't know where to start? The dive through app helps you self-regulate your emotions using feeling tracking, journaling, and interactive courses that are developed by mental health professionals. With Dive Through, you can feel confident that you have the tools to live a mentally healthier and more fulfilling life. Download the Dive Through app for free on the App Store or Google Play. For the record, Usually when I write in my journal, I don't even like write complete sentences because uh, I don't know if you noticed, but I definitely if I write in full sentences or try to tell a story, I try to like make a point like I'm like, I'm David Sedaris. I'm me, me, me. I, I'm so brilliant. This is an essay now. So that was kind of an unusual journal entry. But I wanted to share it because um, it's kind of telling about what I think of as home. (laughs) I'm almost like studying my own thoughts because, well, one, I feel like I'm trying to rediscover myself in some ways. I feel like since this breakup. I mean, since this, I keep saying this year, what I really mean is like from 2020 on, but this year I've just, my priorities I think have changed, but my brain hasn't caught up to that change. So I'm just trying to understand how I think now (laughs) and how that relates to how I used to think. I think this is a pretty normal growing up thing, right? And definitely a normal thing for when you're going through a lot of changes, which we all have been. So here's what I got from (laughs) that journal entry. Uh, I feel more at home when I know where there's a place to walk that 
is not where I live, and uh, it helps if that place is a cup is a place where I can get a cup of coffee, and it's even better if I can sit, and it's the best if I can sit and write. So, the fact that I have found that in Portland, at least for now I don't know that this coffee shop is my favorite but it's definitely a place I know how to get to which is very exciting uh that's comforting and that's great and I want to celebrate that can we celebrate that should we like snap or something yeah I think we should snap do you remember in Legally Blonde 2 when she has the snap cup why does this take up so much space in my brain but there's like a song she's like snap cup time snap cup time okay you know what I'm talking about I know you know what I'm talking about don't lie it's when she works at the White House (laughs) obviously so anyway yeah we're celebrating we're celebrating that I found a coffee shop um what else I really like when I know the names of streets and I don't think it even has so much to do with directions as it does that I think it's a way that I kind of romanticize my life. (laughs) I just, I love knowing the street names. I feel like it's like such a specific setting. I think where I grew up, um, I lived right by a main road and that was very special to me because I could say I lived off that road and people automatically knew what I was talking about. And I think I have finally gotten to a point where I can explain where I live in Portland without sounding like a big dum-dum. In fact, I think I can almost sound like I know stuff. Portland stuff. (laughs) So that helps me feel more at home. I remember when I was living in Oxford, like I mentioned in that journal entry, uh, there were kind of two routes that I could take into the center of town. And by the center of town, I mean the library. And I liked alternating which one because I really felt like each street had a very different vibe because there was the one I mentioned where it was a lot of bars. Uh, In the morning when I was walking there, it smelled like, you know, beer from the night before. And if I was walking back in the evening, it smelled like the beer that was going to be the beer from the night before, if you know what I'm saying. And then the other street that I could walk down was more neighborhoody. And I could see in the morning kids waiting to go to school And their parents kind of, you know, telling them to tie their shoes in British accents. It was so cute. And I I think I could see more of the the Thames. Ever ever heard of her? (laughs) The Thames. God. I'm acting like I didn't call it the Thames for like most of my life. But I could see the river. Uh, So it was more like peaceful and like nature-y. And uh, I'm excited to get that vibe of Portland. I there's a there's a street. I don't know, a couple blocks from me. I'm so bad at measuring things. Like it might be a couple blocks. It might be a mile. I don't know. I can walk there. And more importantly, I can ride a bike there. I've been trying out the uh, the e bike they're electronic and you can rent them like a bird they're like through like a lift the lift app (laughs) I know it's so fancy but my car isn't here yet so (laughs) and I really like riding the bike but anyway there's this street a walkable mile away where it's even though cars can go on the street it's almost exclusively a bike lane so you can just ride down it without worrying about cars sneaking up on you not that cars are like sneaking up on me constantly but it just is kind of freeing you can kind of ride your bike smack in the middle of the road so that is a vibe there are lots of trees on that road I see a lot of people 
not only walking their dogs, but definitely walking for like a peaceful stroll. So that also, I think, has a lot to do with the environment. Because I, I, there's, you know what it is? There's no rushing. There's no rushing on this street. Everyone is taking their time. No one is trying to get somewhere fast. So you can ride your bike as slow as you want. You can take a little, take a little walkity walk and not worry that someone's going to like be pushing past you. (laughs) Pushing past you trying to get to their Portland uh, appointments. I don't know. (laughs) There is something interesting about the places that I've lived where I had to walk a lot either well I guess when I first moved to Los Angeles I didn't have a car when I was living in Oxford I didn't have a car uh when I was living in London I didn't have a car I mean that was a little different because I had the the subway system which was wonderful the tib but uh in New Mexico, I had a car, but I also really enjoyed or almost felt like I needed to walk places just to for peace of mind. And now here I'm walking again and maybe that has a homey feeling, if that makes sense. Maybe walking and getting to know a city from the sidewalks is a way to feel at home. I don't know. What do you think? In terms of the inside of my apartment, hmm, I want to work on feeling at home in my own body. I think that, like anyone, I've gone through different phases of being really cozy and comfy in inside my brain and I really can go anywhere and be with anyone and feel like myself. I de- I'm definitely recovering in a lot of ways from some really big feelings that I think have been settling but do come up still. And so I I do rely on some uh, outward like external activities to keep feeling at home in myself if that makes sense um journaling is definitely one like I said I usually don't even write in complete sentences sometimes I will just pull a tarot card and have that be my kind of journal prompt dive through the app has lots of that is like if you want to journal on your phone that's a great resource uh I doodle (laughs) doodling just makes me feel like myself because I'm an artist and it's just a good reminder of like my natural talents (laughs) talking to my family makes me feel at home no matter where I am Although sometimes it makes me homesick. So that is like kind of a weird line to toe. I Feeling grateful for being able to talk to them definitely helps. So if it's more like, wow, I'm so thankful that I can just pick up the phone and see my mom and dad. Like how awesome is that? That usually helps rather than falling into the hole, which is totally okay to fall fall into it's okay like I can help you get back out I have a ladder the the whole of oh my gosh my family's so far away this year has been so freaking weird what if this is forever oh my god I'm never gonna say them again I forget what they sound like the phone isn't the same as a hug that's exactly what my brain (laughs) sounds like What else? What else makes me feel at home? Obviously, Mr. Mr. the Cat. He has been very clingy lately. I think that has to do with me 
going away for a little while. And I think he's, he and I are both still getting used to this apartment. So when I come back, I think he's happy that I come back, which is unusual for him. He's usually like, oh man, I thought this was finally the day I get the apartment to myself forever. Oh my gosh. I, yes. And another way that I've been feeling at home is reading. Reading makes me feel like myself. So I've been trying to make a point to read once a day. And the best time, in my humble opinion, is right before bed. I think that's a time where I'm usually very tempted, very, very tempted to just go on the ticky tacky and keep scrolling until that one very concerned guy comes up and he's like, hey... I see you've been scrolling. And like, I do the same thing, but I'm worried about you. <laughs> He's like the equivalent of when you're watching Netflix and, and the screen comes up and is like, are you okay? Are you still watching this? You've been here for like five hours. Like you're asleep, right? You fell asleep, right? You can't possibly have been watching this much. Never have I ever. And I'm like, you have no idea what I'm capable of. Uh, the other another thing that I got from my little journal entry that I shared with you um, is the looking for signs I'm trying to find meaning in everything right now because it gives me purpose because it feels like anything good or bad that happens is is actually leading somewhere and it's not all some random assembly of atoms and nucleuses and science stuff that I have no control over. Yeah, so... Looking for signs <laughs> helps me a lot, like the fact that I signed the lease for this apartment on the day that I had been thinking that would be the day I moved back to Los Angeles into the apartment that I will never see again. And like the fact that I had... I mean, I had that airplane credit. Like, who has airplane credits? No one. Never. I don't. I think that's the first time I've ever had an airline be that generous to like give me credit uh, instead of just being like, "Yeah, no, you missed your flight. Suck it up." So my ticket to Portland was twenty dollars, and it was. A nice little flight. I didn't know that it wouldn't be a round trip, but uh, <laughs> but you know what? I did. I bought a one-way ticket because I didn't know how long I was gonna stay here. To be completely completely honest, I didn't know how long I was gonna be completely. Honest. I didn't. I think that was my brain just trying to defend itself from a hard thought, but I bought a one-way ticket to Portland because things were really hard in New Mexico, and I honestly didn't understand why. Um, I've been kind of playing with this idea that I'm, I'm very sensitive. I've always known that. In fact, one time I signed up for BetterHelp, you know, one of those apps where you get, you can talk to a therapist on the app. I I talked to this therapist kind of while I was in between like in-person therapy and even though we didn't talk for technically that long, like in the grand scheme of things, 
she was like, have you ever heard of a highly sensitive person? And I was like, have you ever heard of a highly sensitive person? But then I Googled it and I think that's me. (laughs) I think I'm highly sensitive. I think I feel what people are feeling when I'm not even aware of it. And I have been considering the fact that maybe I thought things didn't feel good in New Mexico because the people around me actually didn't feel good. And I was just catching the feelings. I was catching those emotions because I really felt clueless and I felt out of control. And I just really needed a a break, mostly because it, it wasn't like a it wasn't an obvious thing. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, we're in a tiny house and I have no room to myself. Like I had a room, I had a door, I had a desk. It wasn't like, oh my gosh, I have nowhere to exercise. No, I had like an entire desert. I don't know. There just wasn't a very specific problem that I could fix and so I bought a one-way ticket to Portland with that with that uh, credit that was meant for my trip to New Mexico all those months ago and that feels really meant to be because I didn't know how long how long I was gonna stay I actually thought that maybe I would just stay until June 15th and then I would meet my ex. I'm getting so good at saying that. I was going to meet my ex. My ex. That was me being French. Oh my gosh. I'm so sorry to the entire continent of Europe. I'm so embarrassed. And yeah, anyway. I thought I would meet my ex on June 15th in Los Angeles and never go back to, 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 to Santa Fe. Wow. Do you hear that? My brain really is like, don't talk about that. Don't do it. So, I'm obviously making huge strides toward feeling better. (laughs) Uh, What other signs? I even sometimes, like, I even... um, Okay, so I said that I was renting those e-bikes. Recently, I rented an e-bike, I biked to Whole Foods, I went in, I found fresh figs. If you like fresh figs, then you know you only can really find them like once a year, and I guess that's right now. So I filled my little backpack with fresh figs and toilet paper because that's what I needed. (laughs) And why did I go to Whole Foods for toilet paper? I don't know. Okay. It was, I have no excuse. (laughs) And then I, I rode the bike back to my apartment. I parked it. And then as if the fresh figs weren't enough of a sign that I was in the right place at the right time. The next time I went to the bike rack to rent a bike that exact same bike was right where I left it. And I know it was mine because every time I park them, I don't know how to make them not wonky. So maybe that's why no one wanted it, but I don't care. I decided it was mine. (laughs) It was waiting for me, okay? (laughs) I also have been seeing angel numbers everywhere. Do you know this concept? It's where you see a bunch of numbers in a row. I think that there are beliefs that like each number represents something different. Like let's say like if you look at the clock and it says like 444, that might meet that might mean something different than when you look at the clock and it says like 222. I don't know. I When I see repetitive numbers like that, I just think of it as a little wink from the universe that I'm 
on the right track and someone's looking out for me. Sometimes I see those numbers and I just think it's my grandmother's giving me a little salute. I I was going to say from heaven, but maybe it's more likely that they're inside of a clock. Oh, God, I never thought about my grandmother's souls being trapped inside a clock. But, um, well, now I'm going to think about it. Anyway, even if that was the case, I do think it's a good, a nice, good sign that I am happily assigning meaning to. The more that I notice them, the more that I see them. So I see 1111, I see 1010, 1212. 999. <laughs> and even though those are, you know, pretty common numbers, I've decided they are a sign that I'm home. I am home. I'm in the right place. I'm in this body experiencing the things that I'm supposed to. Doesn't that sound nice? Can we agree that this is nice? I mean, that's nice, right? I think it's nice. (sighs) Recently, I was talking to Brett, who um, is on the team that helps produce Sobcast. Hi, Brett. (laughs) And we were talking about the song that's like, Home is wherever I'm with you. You know that song? (laughs) I let that song mean a lot to me during the pandemic because I was not in my home of Los Angeles. I was not in my own apartment. I was with my ex's mom. And I should say she's like an amazing person. I think, you know what? I don't don't even need to get into that. That's a hard stop. Uh, But it was just, you know, weird year. I let that song play over and over again in my in my little romanticizing mind because I was like, we can be happy because like we're together. Home is wherever I'm with you. And um, Brett told me that the the couple that wrote that song broke up. I'm going to now let that have meaning in my life. (laughs) And uh, on that note, that concludes the thoughts that I'm having about home and finding a new place to belong and also the fact that I'm practicing losing things, just like my friend Liz Liz Bishop, I feel so, that is not okay. Elizabeth Bishop, I'm so sorry. I fully respect you. Sir, madam, my, my queen, Elizabeth Bishop. <laughs> um, I have so been enjoying the conversations that have been going on on Instagram at Sobcast the Podcast. If you have any recommendations or any thoughts or even stories about how you made yourself at home (laughs) in new places, I am so curious. I love to hear about it and I probably will be trying some of the things you say because yeah found a coffee shop I look at the dogs I have my cat I read my books drink more coffee and and I'm thankful to be here okay I love you bye Thank you so much for hanging out with me today. It would super help if you subscribed, left a review, call your grandma, tell her to listen. And if you want more, Sobcast the Podcast, follow us on Instagram. All right, see you next week. Love you. Bye.